So hi guys, it's Shani from Yann and Mize and I'm at Elvington Airfield in York. Um, a little bit further out than I'm used to and I've got this beauty behind me. It's the Kestrel car. I'm passionate about making sure that the Riley Kestrel car, the flying Kestrel car, is, is, is true to the original shape of the car that was in the 1930s. And um, it really is a problem. No one's done it before. Simple as that. We found a Riley Kestrel 9 being stored in a barn in Holland since 1965, which uh, was uh, slowly rotting. Now, nobody wanted to buy this car and restore it, so we decided at Kestrel Beer to bring it back to Britain, where it was originally made, and restore it, but with a difference. And we're going to enter this car into eight world-recognised Motorsport UK land speed records. The Riley Kestrel is transformed with its original craftsmanship and classic character still evident. But when it comes to performance, looks have nothing to do with it. Today, it's time to test the torque and find out if this revived Riley is ready for the track. After a brutal week in the workshop, John's anxious to see the results. We've kind of figured out that there's a problem inside the gearbox, there must be a transfer now he has to reassemble the car, head back to the workshop and keep going. He has only 72 hours left. The flying Kestrel has been bought, broken down, built back up and reintroduced to the world. But today it faces the biggest challenge yet. The land speed record attempts at Elvington Airfield. Badly damaged, but thank goodness John's okay. Given the experience that we had with the crash, the paramount objective is 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 uh, you know, your safety. And what we're going to do is get some experts in aerodynamics to give us their views. We want a balance between as clean as we can make the car go through the air, and the only way to do that is through proper analysis, really. We're going to put it into a wind tunnel test. Today's expensive. It's telling us we've got too much lift on both the front and the rear. We started at 630 odd on the rear lift, yes. and now we got down to 4.4. 4.4, which is pretty much the same as a modern day car. Wow, this is like. Unbelievable. Last time, it, it, it wasn't a great experience, to be honest. Um, I thought John had been killed at one point, and, um, and that, that felt that felt so bad. But that said, it uh, was a massive opportunity to prove all those people wrong that said that we could never break a land speed record with a 1935 Riley Kestrel 9. We set out a strategy for the day, which was to start uh, reasonably slowly um, at the beginning of the day and then build up the speed. You said the gears are gone. Can you repeat? Did you say the gears have gone? Yeah, obviously uh, some more tweaks to do. Um, he's not happy. We're just struggling a little bit with air temperature, so, you know, that's why we're, like, trying to remove a bit of the heat from the engine bay, really. So, um, because because the car's got, like, flat floors and all stuff to make it fast in a straight line, um, unfortunately, all the temperature of the engine has got to go somewhere, and it's not going anywhere, you know, so we've just tried to make some little nice aerodynamic holes, as you can see in this lovely panel that's just been freshly painted. They will do anything to get more speed. 
Jeez. Here it comes. That's good speed. Come on. Come on. That looks fast. That's, That's really fast. fast. Yeah, go on. Go on. Go on, Freddy. Go on. Go on. That looked good. That was a really Boy good run. did well, yeah. Wow. That was fast. Control here. OK, that was the best run yet, guys. 168 miles an hour. That is amazing. Let's get a beer.